Okay, so I've got a question here. We find the maximum likelihood estimate for the parameter p in the geometric distribution 1 minus p to the x minus 1 times p, where p is a probability, so it's between 0 and 1, and x is 0, 1, 2, basically positive whole numbers. Geometric distribution is a discrete distribution, so that's why we get the whole numbers. We don't get one and a half and stuff like that. That will be continuous data. Okay, so maximum likelihood estimate. So what we do, first of all, we find the log likelihood. So the log likelihood with parameter P, uh, P equals, so we take the sum of i equals 1 to n, of the log of the PDF. And this one here is the PDF, so that equals f of x given p. So now we just write this function in here. So we've got 1 minus p to the x minus 1 times p. Okay, so let's just take the log, not forgetting the summation term here. So we've got log of 1 minus p, so we can just write that in there, log 1 minus p, keep that in brackets, and then we've got the summation term for the xi's, so basically we're just going to multiply that from i equals 1 to n of the xi's minus 1, so that goes in here, and then take the log of p. So that basically just becomes plus, we can multiply this by n, so n log p, because we're doing summation, summation from i equals 1 to n. And we didn't need to do it in here because we've still got the summation term related to this term here already. Okay, so n log p, that can stay as it is, that's fine. Now this term here, log of 1 minus p, that's fine. So we can add log of 1 minus p, that's okay. Now we need to do something with this term here. Now, if we was to divide all this by n, this term here would then become the mean, because if you add all the x's up and then divide by the total, that's the same as the mean. So I'm going to write that in here like this. So that's the mean. And then minus 1 over n multiplied by all the n's, that's still going to give us minus 1. So that can stay like this, but then we've divided everything by n, so we've changed the value a little bit. So just to bring it back to what it was before, we then need to multiply everything by n. So I'll just put the plus sign here and put an n there. So that would take care of simplifying this and not changing the value by putting the x bar in there. Okay, next part, let's take the derivative with respect to p. So that becomes n log p just becomes n over p, that's fine. n log 1 minus p, now that would become, just leave the sign for the moment, n over 1 minus p. And then the, because it's the minus p is in the logarithm on the bottom, we then with the chain rule, we now need to put a minus sign. And then we multiply this by x bar minus 1. Okay, now we set this derivative to zero. So now what we end up with is n over p equals n x bar minus 1 over 1 minus p. Okay, so now what we can do is we can just do the cross multiply. So we end up with n times 1 minus p equals p times n, so p times n, so we can put the n there, and then x bar minus 1. Okay, so now what we can do is we can divide everyone by p, sorry, divide everyone by n, so we divide by n, divide this by n, and then we end up with that cancels, that cancels, so we end up with 1 minus p equals p x bar minus 1, and now what we can do is we can add a p to both sides. So p on side on this side and a p on this side. And then we end up with 1 equals 
P X bar minus one plus P. One equals P times X bar minus one plus P. Okay, let's simplify this up a little bit more. So one equals P X bar minus P plus P. So now we've got this and this cancel out. One equals P X bar. Now we can get the P on its own by dividing by X bar each side. So now P equals one over X bar. That's our maximum likelihood estimator. So we can write that in here. One over X bar. Okay, so we have the first derivative, which was N over P minus N X bar minus one over one minus P. So let's take the second derivative of that. So that's minus N over P squared. And then taking the derivative of this one, so we've got minus N X bar minus one, then the one minus P squared. Now just to be careful of the chain rule, the negative makes that become a positive, but then we multiply by a negative again, so then we end up with another negative. So then we know this is valid. So now what we want to know is, is this less than zero? Well, P squared, P is between zero and one. So this is always positive. One minus P, P again is between zero and one squared. This is also going to be positive. Then we're going to, the N is always positive. So that's a positive. N here is also going to be a positive. And then the mean, uh, X bar minus one, that is also going to be positive. So a positive multiplied by a negative and then subtract another positive number is always going to be less than zero. So we know that this is good. So P, P uh, hat equals one over X bar. This is a good estimate.